Okay, we are in the gunner seat. This is my second favorite position to be in this tank. Um, we kind of have a lot going on right here, but quickly I'll show you. Here's your manual traverse. Here's your turret lock. Here's your elevation for your gun up and down. And then you have your actuator here. So when we power up and to go turn it electronically, um, that will be your lock to offset this. So we go back and forward on here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I will show you um, how we power up our turret. And if you have headphones on at this point, be warned, it could be loud. So right here, we'll have the switch. Turret unlock. We'll go ahead and we'll push this up. Now it's not going all the way in. So we'll move the turret just a little bit manually. Now we're free spinning. Unlock. And just like that, we're moving. Now roughly it takes about 15 seconds to go a full 360. And what's really awesome about this is I'm gonna lower the gun. If you wanted to quickly look, when you're spinning around in this turret and you get all discombobulated and you don't know where the driver or the front of the tank is pointing or where the gun's pointing, if you look here, there's an arrow and that will point you always to the front of the tank, no matter where you go in the turret. And, uh, check. Check my periscope. And that's about it. Shut it off. And what we'll go ahead and do, unlock. Now you think you're tight, but you're not. What you gotta do, manually turn it around. There you go. Now you have a little bit extra. Now you're fully locked. What happens is there's gear in there and what the gear will hit the teeth on the top part of this whole ring gear and you won't be locked, but you think you are because this is tight. Go ahead and give this a little jingle. The teeth will follow through, tighten it up and you're good to go. Now, if you're on a hill, what'll happen is everything you, you think you're gonna be okay, you unlock this. As soon as you unlock this and you are up elevated at any point, the whole gun is gonna start spinning. This will run out of control and just start spinning like crazy. There is nothing you can do. You just gotta let it go. So what I do is exactly before, this will be locked and I will actually engage this first. Now we are locked in and then I will unlock that. So it's kind of a safety thing there. Um, not a whole lot of people explain that a lot. I have had to learn the hard way on that one. Fortunately for us, everything worked out. So we'll uh, lock this up. And you can't see it, but we have two paint marks. And now that we know that, that is gun pointing forward. Okay, so we have kind of a, it's a weird saying here, the, the, the tank picks you, you don't pick the tank. And for some odd and strange reason, the Sherman picked me as its driver and um, operator. And I'm gonna show you kind of just something that i um, never really shared with anybody. So we'll elevate this gun all the way up. And I don't know if you can see it. Um, the date on this gun is 72843. 40 years later, I was born. So this gun was made 40 years ago on my birthday. And it's just little things like that that I've noticed 
while working and being in the Sherman for so long that, yes, it is true that the tank picks you. So I'm sitting in the loader's position in our Sherman tank. And I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that this position requires. So basically your job is to sit here, but when you're tasked to load a shell, you load the shell. Pretty easy. So we'll go into our briefcase and pull out a shell. And then we'll bring it just right in here. And then we just basically push it in and we'll close the breech. When you push the shell in, the breech automatically closes. So you need to push it in with some force. But the main thing here is so you don't lose a finger, you always want to push the shell with a closed fist. So you just bam, loaded, and you're ready to go. You go for the ride, they fire, you push this handle back out shell comes out, now what you want to do is you want to keep the shell always pointed away from you for safety, but this is also, you know, because of the gunpowder, it's smoking, and there still might be like maybe a red ember in there, so you just want to give it a second, and then you'll slowly just put it back to the bottom there, and then you'll get your second round if you're going to be firing more than one shot, and what you'll do really briefly is just make sure that you don't see any red in there or any type of smoke after it's cleared because you don't want you know that ember to get and accidentally light off the the next round and that is pretty much it for the loader's position as you can see it is it is tight and that's one of the things on these early style hatches on the Sherman is they didn't have an escape hatch here yet so if you got hit and you were the loader you had to wait for the commander kid to get out and then the gunner to get out. Then you had to either climb over the gun or under it. And right now our gun is pretty high elevated so I can probably, you know, squirm my way out. But if the commander was hit and he was down, you had to either push him out or move him away to get out. So on a Sherman tank, this was the most dangerous position. And there you have it. That was our M4A1 Sherman. Once again, my name was Hector I'm with the Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button too. Thank you.